Hello, and welcome to this special edition of The Analyst Angle, where we're going to continue the discussion around AI. But not alone, I get to bring on, and I'm so excited to have Scott Hebner here, who's the principal analyst and just joined the team. And he's going to help bring a deeper research orientation to the area of AI, working with myself, Dave Vellante, George Gilbert. And we're going to really continue to dive into things, not just Gen AI, because there was things around before Gen AI and, you know, used to be called, now I think everybody calls it ML and things like that. But we're going to continue down this path and really get into things like agenic, small and large action models and really work through this. So I want to welcome to the show, Scott, thanks for coming on board. I think uh, I'm excited to have you on. You have a lot of industry experience. We actually both have very similar backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. That. And so help us understand kind of what the area you're going to unpack is going to be. Yeah, you know, I'm going on three weeks, right? So I'm getting, getting oriented here, right? And again, thanks for having me in today. Um, getting to know you and the other nine analysts and great team. Uh, learned a ton already since I've been here. So it's good. But like you said, I'm going to focus in on AI. And in particular, I'm going to, I'm going to start with uh, a focus on the, the future state of AI. What's the next couple steps, sort of the next frontier in AI? A lot of people talk about generative AI, which is, you know, the big focus today. But one thing I learned in my days at IBM and dealing with clients all the time is you always have to spend you know, 30, 40% of your time thinking about what's next, what's the roadmap, not just focused on today, which is obviously the most important, but as a leader, you also have to be thinking ahead. And particularly with AI, which is moving at even, you know, faster pace than previous technological transformations, right? So um, I think we'll start here with sort of a futuristic view. Yeah, I, I think I love how you put it as a, a roadmap, because both of us being product guys and very product-oriented, engineering-oriented. And I think a lot of the people who are out there are kind of struggling with that. And as you go through developing products, you you want to look around those corners and understand what's coming next and how do you not uh, have a, you know, as we used to say at Amazon, how you have no one-way doors. Well, how do you have a two-way door so that you can come backwards or forwards, but you can, you know, augment that. So help us understand and kind of expand on the first thing that you're putting out. I know you've been working on this paper. So yep. really help us understand where that's at. Yeah, so the, I put a paper out on the open AI announcement around the O1 model and their chain of thought, which they claimed is uh, providing reasoning, AI reasoning. I kind of uh, analyzed that and provided some perspective on causal AI, which I, I will probably get into here um, a little bit. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to come out with a series of five papers that is going to be all about the advent of causal AI. And the first one I'm going to put out, um, you know, very quickly, if not in a couple of days, will be the uh, focus on the marketplace. So where does this all start, right? And, you know, our, our vision here at the Cube Research is this notion of agentic AI being a major part of the future, um, a more architected approach that brings together AI agents that feed off an ecosystem of AI models. And those models are, you know, large language models. I think that provide that general purpose, generally applicable set of generative services for the enterprise. Then a whole collection of domain specific, small language models. And S not just being for small, but specialized, sovereign, secure, right? And then there's going to be knowledge graphs and causal models that then feed off of those that infuse cause and effect, right? Yeah. And then the whole thing is an ecosystem where they teach each other and they learn from each other and become smarter and smarter and smarter. And that decision intelligence gets fed into the network of AI agents that are then helping human beings solve problems, make better decisions, you know, acting on their behalf and so on. So this is all going to come together in a architectural approach that I think is going to represent the future. And that's the big picture. Um, but I think we need to start off, um, at least what I'm going to do is start off with kind of defining this AI um, marketplace in terms of causality and the science of why things happen. Yeah, I, I, I think you hit a lot of a lot of things in that. It was just a lot to unpack. And I think that the small language models, I love the, the three S's with that and you know, sovereign and secure as well. I, I think that to me, uh, what we've been looking at is, again, you're going to bring these models in and fine tune them for a particular task. That's the agentic model. And then you have these network of agents and things of that nature. 
I think what what we see, and again, you know, having been around the block a little bit as well with this stuff, uh, you know, again, we called it ML back in the day, but right. you know, not so much AI. Was that you know, causal has been around for a bit, and mm-hmm. it's it's not brand new and there's some really good stuff that's out there on the market already but it's actually tying into stuff that's you know some of the methods and using gen ai to help do that and like you said also even knowledge graphs and things of that nature which could be you can you know uh think of it's is that causal or not causal depending on how the tree is built out things like because mm-hmm. the adjacency but what are some of the importance that you think of when you look at or what is the importance of causal AI today? And as you see that, well, today's predictive models and generative AI models that are embodied in the large language models are pattern recognition machines. Right? They operate on statistical probabilities. Statistical probabilities—that's a static world. Right. Right. What causal will tell you is how those statistical probabilities change when the world around you changes. Um, last I saw, every day, the world's changing around us. Your business is changing around you every second of the day, right? So if you want uh, your AI to r- truly understand how your business operates, not how you think it operates, but how it actually operates, and then be able to understand cause and effect, which, again, that's all that occurs in a business. Everything is a cause and everything is effect. Right. Right. Aristotle once said that once you prove the cause, uh, you immediately prove the effect. And conversely, everything that exists has a cause, right? Yeah. And I think if you take that philosophical view and you apply it to a business, that's true. Um, so causal AI is all about, you know, helping people understand how the business operates. And then from there, um, it supports a dynamic world of change. So whether it be through intervention, whether it be through um, creativity, changing conditions around you, it's going to allow those statistical models, probabilities that traditional AI and machine learning operates upon to adapt. Yeah. Right. And even more interesting is you can then intervene with the model. What if scenarios? You know, I have all these different options I can take to fix my customer churn problem. Right. Of, of these 15 different scenarios, which one is the right one to take that's going to really affect my profitability, retainment, and revenue, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't do that with today's models today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I to your point, I mean, I remember back to the 90s when we were doing, before everything was called, uh, you know, observability. And this is a space where uh, a causal AI has really taken off is in observability yeah. space. I know we'll talk about the market in a few minutes, but one of the things is, you know, correlation engines were the big thing. And using ML and probability to understand is it a 50-50 chance this was the problem or something, this caused my network outage and things of that nature, to your point, it's kind of those loose connections, almost like a knowledge graph of how correlation versus causation, which is, hey, I'm going down the tree and I know if this, then that, if this, you know, it's almost if then else kind of programming, except, you know, the AI and the ML and the models are doing that all for you. It would seem like this, this to me is one of those big, turning points that it hel- it's it's helped people and now when you're building those causal AI and the agents on top of it you can ha- like you said have a network of those bring it together yeah I think there's gonna be a bunch of you know limitations that say that are going to be driving people to causal AI um, first and foremost is going to be today's large language models are prone to hallucinations and bias they conceal influential factors they may overemphasize over, you know, some factors that aren't as important as others. And that's how you get into these situations where do I really trust it? It can't, exp- it's a black box. I can't, exp- it doesn't explain to me what it's doing, why it thinks this is the right answer, right? So that's going to drive people into the world of causality. Because um, again, correlation, big mistake to equate that with causation, right? Yes. And and the models do that because they don't really know what you're what you're asking them. The other is if you want to problem solve, by definition, you're reasoning, and by definition, that's about cause and effect, right? And if you, you know, like you were, you mentioned observability, one of the things that a lot of these vendors are starting to come out with now is root cause, probably root cause of an incident. It's one thing to say there's an incident because I see the symptoms. It's another thing to actually identify the root cause 
It's cause and effect. So you have all these different, yeah. you know, limitations in today's AI that will drive people to start playing around with causal AI. And what I find one of the best attributes of causal AI is it's not rip and replace. It's very incremental. You can start introducing these methods, and that's the power of the small language models that feed off the large language models, because you can build those domain-specific models, infuse causal knowledge right, and understanding into it, and then as it learns, it fuses back into the large language model, the learnings, and just that right. the whole ecosystem gets smarter. Um, actually, I think we have a chart that kind of summarizes. We got kind of deep quick here. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Um, I mean, I think this kind of tries to really summarize what really what we're talking about here, right, is you live in a world that is dynamic, right? In that dynamic world, you're going to want to ask some very simple questions like, what should I do? So today's models are pretty good at predicting what you should do, forecasting. They generate the what, but they can't tell you how it did it or how you should go about it. And it certainly can't tell you why this is the best answer among many alternatives, right? Causal AI is going to start to incrementally allow that to be infused into these models and be able to explain it, right? Not only descriptively, but you can also predict predictively, but most importantly, prescriptively, you know. So that's really, really important because people want to understand what's being right produced here and why, and not just for regulatory reasons or any other policy, but you want to trust the model, and the way to trust the model is have it explained to you. Yeah, I see. Explainability, yeah, is, is key. It's key, yeah. and it's 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 really missing today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think we we look at it, and I know we we talk about this a lot around the table with the the, the rest of the team around you know lineage and where are the answers coming from. We even have it in our cube AI where hey, here's where the source came from to be able to do that. Because to your point, you know you. You know, want the models to also help the person understand, okay, this is what caused, you know, the causation of that so that they can, you know, get to the root cause and they right. fix it because, and potentially prevent it from happening again. I would see that as a big piece of this as well is that, hey, it's, you know, yeah. you, you, like you were talking about, you know, joining the LLMs and Gen AI with causal and bringing those together so that you can go and get that deep knowledge. That must be a big piece of this as well. Yeah, and a couple uh, research notes downstream from here, because I'm gonna kind of build this out over time, but we'll get into, you know, a neural network today, um, there's an input and there's an output. It's a big black box, right? What, like, how did you come up with this thing, right? The causal neural networks and starting to infuse that into it actually understands the pathway through the neural network and therefore can decode um, how it came up with that answer and actually tell you why it didn't, you know, choose different paths. Very incremental build out over time. But I think, you know, in many ways, this is the future of AI. Generative AI is the big thing today. It wasn't five years ago. And I think over time, causal and the notion of why things happen and what can I do to improve things will become a bigger and bigger part of the, of the mix here. And that's, that's good, you know, getting exciting. I, I, I agree. I mean, it goes back, uh, you know, a few years with a company uh, that I helped build out, we actually, part of the patent that the acquiring company bought was for that open and closed network theory that we built in from an AI ML perspective to do exactly that, the causal portion. And you could, yeah. here, here we have all of the, all of the components or here we're, we have two out of the three and we can make an assumption based on that about that third problem that we don't have information for. And I think that becomes the, one of the keys for it, but you know, what are people really looking and using causal for? I mean, there's some research out there already. Uh, I think you know, yeah. Databricks and uh, uh, Data IQ mm -hmm. uh, have put this out. So, kind of take people through this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the use cases are like I was. We, we've been saying already. I mean, if you have use cases that uh, you, you need a deeper level of explainability for whatever reason, if you want to be able to help people problem solve with your AI, right? Which means what if scenarios, counterfactual reasoning, right? For example, I mean, those kind of use cases are going to require, you know, decision intelligence, some people call it. Those kind of use cases are going to require infusion of this causality, right? And today's world is basically 
a lot of developers and AI engineers that are in companies, there's methods all over the place. There's a whole open source community, PyY, for example, you know, salesforce.com came out with a causal library for time series. Um, there's a whole bunch of them that you can go out as a developer and start to build this stuff in. Where it's going to get super powerful is when the platforms and tools democratize it for, for the mere mortals out there, right? And I think that's where this is all, where this is all heading. But um, as this Databricks and um, Data IQ um, survey of 400 AI professionals showed that of the pioneers, over half of them are already either using or experimenting with causal AI techniques. Right. And when you kind of break everything down, um, the number one technology that's not being used today, but they plan to use in the, over the next year is causal AI. So I think there's momentum behind it. It's for all the you know drivers that we talked about before. So there is a lot of activity going on out there now. There's hundreds of success stories from customers that are published all over the web. Um, I'll talk about some of those in, in the paper. So I, I think that's what's going on here is that they're trying to solve these core issues. They want to build higher ROI uh, use cases, which require you know, so-called reasoning and decision yeah. intelligence, problem solving, explainability. This is how they're starting to fix it. And, you know, again, it's really hard stuff. It takes complexity to a whole new level compared to generative AI. However, the tools are going to democratize that. And that's that's where this is going to get really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is the, where, uh, again, these techniques have been around like we've been talking about for a while, but the, I think the power is joining them together. And I know we talk about this with uh, Dave and George are talking about the small action models leading to large action models and co co collections of agents and the agentic managed in a way. And like you were talking about having the network of agents brought together. I, I think we'll, this is a space we'll be definitely digging into in, in a big way. It if you want an agent to help, um, particularly in time sensitive scenarios, be able to act on your behalf if human inter intervention is not um, feasible, you know, think about that. That, a that, a that agent needs to not only understand what to do, but understand the consequences of its actions. Because right. whenever there's an action to be taken, there's usually multiple choice. Which one do I take? So even, you know, you just start thinking logically here, you're going to have to get down to this cause and effect mechanisms that underpin all this. And to your point with these methods having been around for a while, I mean, obviously Tesla and Uber, I mean, these guys have built this into their, the, the way their stuff operates, right? That's very different than everyday businesses being able to adopt this and do it quickly with data scientists doing it, not hardcore AI engineers. That's where this world is heading, and that's that's what the marketplace is starting to form now. Yeah, and I, I think that's a good segue into what the marketplace and the ecosystem of users and producers looks like. And you have this chart here that really kind of sums up. I mean, there's a lot of people in there. Uh, there's the folks like I was talking about, like Dinah Trace, who's got their Berkeley that's been doing this for quite some time, and others in that observability space, to put it mildly, not only in observability. Uh, you had a number of uh, companies that have been bought up like Aptio and others have been yep. also bought that have this stuff in there. Not to mention the fact that you get into a lot of the security companies have used this now. And to your point about taking actions and is, is it a, is it better to be uh, near right or quick? And right. So kind of talk to this and, and kind of lay out this whole marketplace yeah. Uh, action. Yeah. So the big picture is um, went out and I looked at six, I believe, market projections that were available out there. So the consensus view, you know, we, we here at the Cube are trying to analyze all this stuff, um, is it's about a forty to forty-five percent Kager through twenty twenty-three, um, growing to about a one billion dollar market price. Um, Gen AI, by the way, is probably 40 billion, 20, 40, you know, huge, you know, um, marketplace. But I remember the initial estimates of the marketplace for Gen AI three, four years ago, three years ago, right before OpenAI came out with the first thing, were not nearly what they are now. And you're going to see a, a similar dynamic here because, like we said, we have 
AI developers and data scientists already apply in this. You saw the Databricks survey. Um, you obviously have the vendors that are creating offerings that are specific to causal AI. And I break those into two categories, general purpose. So any business, any use case, finance, manufacturing, retail, and then there's the domain specific. Like you mentioned, observability, security, drug therapy, you know, marketing optimization, supply chain, you know, uh, incident, you know, remediation, things like that, that are applying AI. And then you got the big players, you know, again, AWS, Google, Meta, OpenAI, IBM, and so forth. If you look at what they're doing, they all have research efforts underway in causal AI. I think it's just a matter of time before those mainstream, those flagship AI platforms and the cloud platforms start to surface these features. Um, I would hope that they're going to be doing that. You take all that collectively, the market's going to be a hell of a lot bigger than $1 billion. Yeah. I think the $1 billion is just those companies that have general purpose, um, you know, platforms and tools for causal AI. And that's probably understated too. It's going, this is going to be... This is going to be a defining factor of the next frontier because, again, I don't see how you have all these agents collabor collaborating to help people solve problems and to act on people's behalf without having mechanisms of cause and effect and understanding why things happen and the consequences of what they do. Yeah, I, I think I think that really uh, it's home for us because I, I think when you start to look at it, it's really about how how do all these pieces come together and what is going to be the next thing that people are worried about and I, I think again you know getting into that you'll be you know really digging in on this uh, I, I think this this really uh, is a big target because like you said I think it's a collection it's not it's not this or that it's not gen AI or causal AI it is how do you bring this all together yeah, the when I as I mentioned early on, I've learned a ton since I got here, and so it's only been what three weeks or so. And the first thing was this whole agentic AI vision that you guys have all been on for some time. You've been doing a lot of work at uh, George Gilbert, you know, Dave, John, you know, the whole team has been right, which I found fascinating. And I'm sort of bringing maybe a little bit of the AI and particularly the importance of the causality, in, in, sort of into the mix here. And I agree with you 100. Right? We what we have today, particularly in the AI space, is you have a whole bunch of piece parts that people are building and that do things that are getting pretty good ROI so far, right? It's when they all get architecturally brought together into this agentic kind of vision, I think that the real power is going to be unleashed. You want the agents because you want things, you know, just decision apps are one thing, but getting actual agents that can collaborate and work together, they need to understand how to work with each other and therefore they have to understand how the business operates. You need small language models that are specialized and secure and sovereign that understand each of the domains within a business. You need the large language model that's a solve world piece, you know, knows everything, you know, the, the brain in the room that, right? And then the whole thing has to feed in a, in a teaching loop to keep getting everything smarter across that ecosystem. It just makes so much sense. And then you got all the infrastructure and cloud that sits underneath that to make this happen. You know, piece parts to an architected approach, I think, is what we're going to see here. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, I, and I'm excited to see what's next. So, you know, thanks for coming on board today. And, you, you know, we're excited to see the paper when it gets released very soon here. Yep. And, uh, you know, we'll be back uh, talking, I know, more than, more than uh, a few times. So you bet. thanks for coming on today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching The Q, the leader in tech news and analysis. We'll be back with more. I, I you can't get enough of AI. So we'll be back with more. Stay tuned.